We're delving into the NBA playoffs and the unique persona of Jimmy Butler with the New Yorker's Louisa Thomas. Plus, the NBA is nearing a historic broadcast rights deal as one media powerhouse tries to box out another. The Premier League could implement a spending cap, and LeBron James is leaving his options open. It's Wednesday, May 1st. Happy May Day. I'm Owen Poindexter, and this is Front Office Sports Today. A historic NBA media rights deal is approaching, and we are starting to get hints about what's going to be in it. NBC Universal is offering around $2.5 billion per season for a package of national games that would be shown on NBC and Peacock, according to the Wall Street Journal. If the NBA goes for that, NBC would join Disney, which could nearly double the $1.5 billion it's paying next year to $2.6 billion annually, starting in the 2025-26 season, when all of these deals would kick in. Amazon is also reportedly closing in on a deal to be the NBA's primary streaming partner in a deal that it could include playoff games. The question is, does that leave room for TNT? The NBA has been on TNT since 1989, and together they rode the rise of the cable bundle. But now, as the cable bundle falls apart, Warner Bros. Discovery is in a tough negotiating position with a league that is looking toward a younger, more international audience. And if TNT can't find a way in... What happens to its massive contracts with Charles Barkley, Ernie Johnson, Kenny Smith, and Shaquille O'Neal, who all signed contract extensions with the network in 2022? We should have answers to these questions soon. The Premier League is close to implementing a salary cap. The idea would be to take what teams receive in centralized broadcast and commercial deals, look at the amount given to the team that gets the least, and cap spending at five times that. Under the proposal, the cap would have been $647 million for the 23 season, and only Chelsea would have been over that line. So this likely wouldn't change the basic status quo in which some teams have way more to spend than others and are mostly able to maintain that situation by using that money to stay on top of the standings. But it would put a ceiling on how much teams can spend at a time when the league is being flooded with investment money, particularly from the Middle East. 14 clubs will have to approve the proposal for it to go into effect in a vote set to take place in June. After the Lakers were bounced from the playoffs by the Denver Nuggets, LeBron James declined to say whether he would exercise his opt-out. James can play one more year with LA for $51.4 million or take his talents elsewhere. There's no reason for him to rush the decision. He has until June 29th to decide. Just so happens that the NBA draft is on June 26th and 27th, and his son, Bronny James, has declared for the draft. Bronny had a rough freshman season at USC last year. He had a cardiac arrest last July, didn't play a game until December. He averaged just under five points and three rebounds per game last season. So for any NBA team that drafts him, it's unclear how much of a contributor you're getting. But there's a decent chance you're also getting at least a year of his dad. LeBron has said he wants to play with Bronny before he retires. The Warriors get to pick before any team that made the playoffs, so maybe they go for it to pair with Steph Curry with another living legend. If they don't, the Lakers can go for Bronny with the 17th pick if the Heat or 76ers don't do it first. After that, any playoff team could be the one that drafts the 19-year-old in the hopes that the 39-year-old will follow. All right. Very excited to be joined now by Louisa Thomas, staff writer for The New Yorker. Welcome, Louisa. Thanks for having me. Great to have you back on. So last time we spoke, it was off of a piece that you wrote about Nikola Jokic. Uh, You recently wrote about Jimmy Butler. It occurs to me that you'd be hard-pressed to find two more opposite players, especially (laughs) in terms of who they are off the court. Um, Yeah. How would you describe Butler? Um. Well, you know, they both, I think, are who they are. So I actually think in some ways they have more similarities um, than you might um, than you might think off the bat. I mean, Jimmy Butler is a, well, he's a character. Um, he's a character of his own making in some ways. Um, he is has these kind of big... Um, entrepreneurial instincts, competitive instincts. Um, He has this really fascinating backstory. Um, He had a really tough upbringing, um, actually spent much of his um, high school career homeless and, and, and actually like Jokic was underestimated really at every turn. Um, You know, he was not a five-star recruit. He did not, um, you know, he did not go to Kentucky. He did not, you know, he, um, he really sort of had to prove himself and also improve himself. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, I actually think there's a lot of parallels with uh, Nikola Jokic um, because these are both players who were not really kind of identified as potential NBA superstars. Um, and you know what? 
because they weren't necessarily obvious potential NBA superstars. They, one of the amazing things about both of them, um, I think they were underestimated for different reasons, um, but both of them worked really hard on improving their games and, and did. Um, and sort of both were very, very smart about seeing what their roles were on the court um, and how they could become better. And um, both are pretty kind of, I think probably like not the best teammates for everyone. I could definitely say that about Jimmy Butler, who really famously is like, you know, flamed out of a couple teams. Um, he is a very kind of hard charging guy. Um, um, he's also one of five people, I believe, five NBA players who are going to be on a Netflix series similar to quarterback where we follow them around and get a more a fuller picture of their life. And I'm wondering because he presents so much on the surface. I mean, yeah, there's like emo Jimmy thing. And, you know, he does like all this weird stuff for media day. He has this coffee company. I'm wondering uh, what we might get to know about him when we go a layer deeper and like, you know, spend some time with him, like maybe when he's not presenting a certain image. Well, that's a good question because, um, you know, he's very sort of, I mean, he has a lifestyle brand as many basketball players do, um, big face. Um, and, um, which is, I guess started as his co coffee company, but has <laughs> greater ambitions. Um, and you know, these shows are branding exercises ultimately. And so the question is, um, are they only branding exercises or are they actually opportunities to sort of like see a real human behind the, behind the brand. And, and, and with someone like Jimmy Butler, it can be sort of hard to distinguish between the two because the promise of the brand is authenticity. So you never really know whether what you're getting is a kind of exercise and, in, in, you know, self-fashioning or whether or not it's something that is some sort of like more kind of exposure of vulnerability. I mean, and, 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 and again, like in some, in some ways, maybe those distinctions don't matter when you come to someone like him, but, um, but but it will be it will be interesting to see. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I sort of find myself going in a loop with him where it's like I'm not quite sure how seriously to take anything he right. does. I mean, clearly some of it's just like him goofing around, like the the emo Jimbo thing. Yeah. Um, and like even his coffee company where he's charging twenty bucks a cup for a cup of coffee and there that was in the NBA bubble. You know that guy's a big face. So well, he, he charged twenty dollars. Is here's the story. So he charged hundred twenty dollars. He's charged twenty dollars, but he realized that they were getting their, they got their per diems in a, you know, big fat envelope of cash. And it's like, it was like a thousand, it was like a thousand dollars in $100 bills. And then like a 20. And he knew that like, these, there's not, they're not going to the ATMs. Like most of the, you know, restaurants are, are they're being paid off their like wristwatch or whatever their, their key, you know, at Disney is. And so he realized these guys have a lot of cash, but they don't have a lot of $20 bills. They've got a lot of a hundred dollar bills. So if he charged, $20, no change, $20, no change. That meant that a lot of guys were going to be paying with a hundred dollar bills, no change. And that's what big face stands for. Actually. It's like the big face on a hundred dollar bill. So because most of his, uh, most of his, most of his cup, cups of coffee were actually, were actually a hundred dollars on 20. And that's a classic Jimmy Butler story. You know, it's a very smart, uh, very, uh, de you know, devious, <laughs> playful, um, you know, so, but yeah, it's, it's hard to know what to do with a lot of these stories because he is kind of having fun with, with all of us, I think, and with himself. Um, and at the same time, there does seem to be some sort of like depth to him, you know? Right. Yeah. He seems very serious about what he does. I mean, yeah, we talked about his hyper competitiveness and yeah, at the same time. Um, and I feel like he's sort of one of those figures where, um, like he's in a fallout boy music video, um, and he just sort of like pops up in these, in these, you know, random spots. And like, part of the joke is just that it's him. It's almost like a, a Super Bowl commercial where they dig up celebrities where it's like, it's just funny because you don't expect to see that person in that situation. And I think he's very in on that joke, um, and has a lot of fun with it. And at the same time is, you know, like this insanely competitive, serious person. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, I mean, he's, um. Yeah, he, he enjoys being a cameo, I think. <laughs> we, um, let's zoom out a little bit to the uh, the rest of the NBA. So uh, Butler's injured and his, you know, his team's probably not going to make it long enough for him to come back. Um, Steph Curry's out. Denver really made it. LeBron's out. Durant's out. A lot of the sort of big names of the past five to ten years. Uh, are not on the court, but we've got some super loaded teams. Um, you know, the Celtics look 
super dominant. And then teams that are sort of more like ensemble groups, like the Knicks are finally good again. Um, as I've said way too many times on the show, uh, the, you know, like the Timberwolves, the Thunder, they're like these teams that people don't necessarily know, especially if you're not a big basketball fan, but it's kind of a nice coming out party for, um, for some of these less heralded stars. Sure. I mean, there's, uh, well, I mean, you mentioned the Thunder. Um, they're an incredibly young team. You know, one of their best players is a rookie. Um, another one of their best players, one of the best players in the in the world is like, you know, quite young. I don't know how, um, actually, I don't know Shea Gilgis, Gilgis Alexander's age off the top of my head. But um, I mean, it's a very young team and a very good team. Um, and, you know, Anthony Edwards is is 22. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's when I always forget that he's that Yeah, young. it's insane. Um, probably the most charismatic, um, player in the league right now. Um, certainly he's the kind of, he's the one, he's the name that's on everyone's lips, you know, as we're talking, I think, um, I think, I think there is a sort of sense of, of, um, yeah, guard changing. Um, I think that's fair to say, um, it's probably about time, you know, (laughs) I'll credit to LeBron James, but, um, yeah, and he's still great. Steph's still great, but like they are getting old, and like you, you, we're at the point of like, okay, how many years do, do we have left you know, of those guys? Um, and there are players who are at least as good or better uh, on the court um, as much as they bring. And yeah, speaking of guard changing, the NBA uh, we're starting to get little bits and pieces of offers around their next media deal. They seem to be close with Amazon. NBC is making a big offer, um, and whatever happens with their next set of media deals when they're likely to get more media partners, but it's inevitably, it's going to be some kind of, if not a rebrand, a sort of um, a change to the, the look and the feel of the NBA's national image. And I'm wondering if you have any thoughts on where they're headed or where they should be headed. Well, um, I'm, I have a lot of thoughts actually. <laughs> I mean, one thing that's a challenge for the, you know, the NBA is that it it's, has a long season, it has an even longer season, you know, because of the play-in tournament. Um, and, um, you know, and there's a little bit of a tension in the NBA between the regular season and the, and the postseason. And that's been kind of come to the fore this season um, because in preparation for these media rights deals, media, right, uh, media rights deal, um, the, the league has made a really big push to make sure that its stars play every day. Um, and that, you know, I don't know whether it's correlation or causation, but you know, the, the main story of the playoffs so far is actually like injuries. (laughs) Um, and that's a, that's a kind of real, real source of tension within the, between the league and the the players and, um, something they'll be looking at as well, but there is a kind of, they do need to work out. Um, and I think that's what they're trying, they're trying to do is like how, how to make, a regular season game feel really important in a, in a sort of holistic way so that it's less like a five minute clip and more something that, you know, you want to sit down and watch a whole game of, which I think the the playoff still has Um, while also recognizing the the playoff is the real kind of, you know, marquee event. Um, So, you know, I think that they'll be looking at that kind of like, how do we prioritize player health so that the players are available when everybody is watching while also making sure the players are available when fewer people are watching um, so that more people will then watch. Um, And, you know, I think that's like an ongoing conversation um, with, I hope, which I hope people are taking very seriously um, because all these injuries are just a total bummer and it might be just coincidence, but um, it's still a total bummer. you know, and, and there's a, I mean, I'm going to be interested to see like my own personal, I, like everyone else, I'm, I'm, I'm curious about the role of, um, you know, gambling, um, companies and the gambling money that, um, is flowing into the, into the league, um, and, you know, indirectly and to the players. Um, but I, you know, league pass is like now famously incorporated, you know, um, betting into its broadcast. I'm sort of interested in what kind of, uh, role, you know, the, um, if any, maybe you, you're a better person to answer this than me, like negotiations around that involve, like, are they, to what extent is that going to be foregrounded or lessened or ignored or whatever? Because I feel like the kind of intrusion of, of, you know, gambling into the broadcast has been kind of something I've really noticed. And I think a lot of people have noticed, and I wonder if that's a conversation they're having as they're doing these 
deals and what direction that's taking, um, kind of taking the league or, or whether or not there's a conscious pushback against it. Um, and maybe that's just a totally separate conversation, but because it has become such a big part of the broadcast, it, it can't be, I don't think I asked about, but that's what's on my mind. <laughs> um, and then there is the John Tay Porter incident which I think the NBA wants us to think of as like this isolated thing, you know, this fringe player, you know, made a mistake. We caught him. So yeah, exactly. This is some working. This was going on behind the scenes, but because we have these partnerships, you know, we have monitoring and we can punish the centers and, you know. Um, but then there's the flip side of like, would this have happened in the first place be if without it being so available to him? And also like, are, are there guys we're not catching? Are there guys in college who, you know, are making little to nothing who have all the more incentive? I mean, like most NBA players, you know, if they're making $20 million a year, they're not going to like, you know, they, they would, the, the scheme would have to be so enormous and so easily catchable for them to get involved with something like this. But uh, a guy who's like barely on the roster who can make a bunch of money just by like saying like, oh, like I have a migraine, like I got to sit out the rest of the game. Um you know, and, and yeah, and then double that for, for college, the incentives are, are there. Um, I think it just makes for very awkward headlines. And I think the NBA and most other leagues are just going to try to skate through this and say like, look, we caught them and, um, and also we're making a bunch of money. So we're, we're just not going to worry about this too much. I mean, I think I, I hijacked your question. Um, but I am, I am sort of curious about like, you know, these, these are the revenue streams right now, right? It's TV money and and, and gambling money. And I'm wondering about how those streams like work with and against each other and how the league will kind of prioritize, um, you know, protecting one. I wonder to what degree those conversations are happening like in parallel or in the same kind of as we're, as they're talking about TV, you know, are they talking about, because I'm sure as, you know, NBC comes forward or Amazon comes forward, you know, Amazon's a streaming service. Like, are they talking about, you know, we can incorporate your partners, you know, in the same way that League Pass is doing, like, is that a kind of like a service that Amazon might, might be wanting to offer? I haven't read anything about that. I haven't heard anything about that. It's just 100% speculation. Um, I'm just, I'm like sort of curious about how those negotiations are going to go, whether or not they involve that kind of, um, you know, I guess what used to be called like synergy, you know? Um, but I'm curious about it. Um, Louisa Thomas, always a pleasure having you on. Thanks for joining Thank us you. on the show. All right, bye. That's it for today. Subscribe and drop us a rating and review. It helps other people find the show. Thanks for listening. We'll see you tomorrow.